Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Hey guys, welcome back. So we'll be continuing the relationships Q&A, but this time it'll be about friends. So first question. Is it bad to be a jealous friend? It always depends on you, what your intention is, and what your thoughts are. Technically, jealousy is not, for me, jealousy is not something that you should harbor in your heart. So whether you have good intentions or not, jealousy is something that has to be rechecked. But you can't recheck it if you don't first know what your intentions are, why are you jealous, what do you want to see in your friendship. I think it boils down to you, your choices, your decisions, and the way you want your friendship to grow. So next, how do you distinguish your friendship from being real or from needs intimidation? So this question basically means like how do you know if friends are friends because they want to be friends with you or because they need something from you. So I've experienced both and I think the common thing that is a denominator on this is if they're there for you through the ups and downs. But there could be a lot of friends who are with you in the ups and downs and yet they don't stay the entire time. Consistent, caring, they're considerate. I know considerate and caring are somehow the same, but when they're considerate, that means you don't have to be on the same page, but they understand you anyway. They can, both of you can adjust to one another, you can adapt, you're not the same, but you also know how to work on similarities and work on your differences. So I think it really will just show in all the actions and all the words that they say. If there's something that you can see as a pattern of them asking things from you, then that's probably a sign where it's just for needing what you have. But if they're there, whether you can give something back or not, that's giving truly. Because when you give with a full heart, you don't expect anything back. So those are ways that you could tell. Next, are you a good friend if one friend got annoyed and everyone followed for the sake of it? So if you're in a circle of friends and there's an argument and one, there are like two people, one is mad at the other and because you don't want to feel left out, you just follow along. So I think that when it comes to being a good friend, as mentioned earlier, it's all on your character, it's all on how you act based on what you say, it's how you show them what you feel, how you care about that person. And so if you want to be a good friend and there's a conflict in your group of friends, I think that you have to say what you have to say. It's always better if you know what's going on and you have like a part of it to say what needs to be said in a good way that can resolve the conflict. But if you want to say a lot of things that don't help, it's better to stay quiet. And above all, you ask God for wisdom and his peace to help you say anything to anyone because when we're at the height of our emotions, Usually even the best things could turn out bad, so always just be discerning and wise when it comes to saying things are in the middle of a conflict. Should you stay in a circle of friends even if you feel like you don't belong? Is there any hope? So based on my experience, I, well like moving to the Philippines, it took four years before I found a group of friends where most of us are still like close until now. There will be times where you'll be put in a group of friends and it's going to test you. It might not be because they do other things or wrong things, it's just how are you and who are you? Who do you want to be? What do you want to do in your life? So if there are people where you feel like you don't belong, what I had to do which was Something I didn't want to do at the moment was to evaluate. So why do I not feel like I belong? Is it because of the things they say? Is it because of the way they act? Is it their aura? Is it their, I don't know, like what, what is it about this group that I don't feel like I belong with? Is it 
like you look at the characteristics of the group because that's where you would know that okay I'm kind of different because I want to be like this like I don't need those things because they don't help me in my personal growth especially in my walk with God so that's an area where I could reflect on and since it doesn't help me then it's okay if I don't try to fit into this kind of group so instead when I find a group of friends now I have like different kind of groups because of my old like high school and then college and then at church so these are the kind of groups that I could say that even if I was shy I eventually feel like I fit in because of the, the way that things are like a vibe so if you feel like you're you don't belong I think you just really have to evaluate the group you're in and see why so that you would know what to do if it's something that you think is just you being afraid then that's hope for you to actually ask for help to grow and improve. But if that group, like I said, is a group where it's not bad, it just it's just not along your path either, then that's where you have to evaluate and just pray and ask God to help you find a certain group of friends and to work things out. Okay, what would you do if someone didn't say a proper goodbye? I think that first, I keep saying this, but I think you have to evaluate yourself first. Like, are you sad? Are you heartbroken in a friend, in like a friend aspect? Are you jealous? Are you in pain because of it? Because if you feel those emotions, then it's not just that person, it's also you. If you're in that state where you're not fine, then it's going to have to take both sides. And if that person is someone you can't see anymore and you probably don't have contact with or if you do it's just seeing their posts and not being able to talk I think that personally like on your side you have to release forgiveness not just to that person but to yourself you have to ask God to like work on your heart that even if there was no proper goodbye you can still live your life and move on that you would pray for your friend because you care but you won't be so attached those are, if you're very attached to the point that a lot of things around you remind you of that person, then that's a lot on your heart and your mind. So you have to make the choice to let go a bit, to ask God to really just help you to lessen or release whatever unforgiveness, whatever pain is in your heart. I think for me, knowing myself, I would try to reach out like one or two times and if it doesn't work out then I would just pray for that person and ask God to help me move on because I have so many other friends, so many priorities that need to be taken care of and if I just focus on one person then everything else gets affected. So when it comes to saying goodbye, sadly there will be goodbyes that we don't like, there will be goodbyes that we do like and there will be goodbyes that are unexpected. So either way, they're going to be a part of life and it's always going to be up to us on how to adapt and how to cope up with that situation. Is long distance a good reason to break? So as mentioned in the previous video when it, com when it comes to long distance relationships, that's not like the basis for you to break up as friends or even in a relationship. Like I have firsthand experience of how relationships can last. So in the previous video I mentioned my parents having a long distance relationship for about five years. Now, I'm going to share that I've had friends, I have friends, who are, let me see, I think it's been almost nine years that we've been at a long distance friendship. So, it's not just one person, it's a lot of friends. Um, it amazes me because my longest friend for life is Arianne and I think we've been friends for 13 years so that's like more than half of my existence there's also another friend that I have in America she's in Oklahoma we only met once and on the last two days of the seven-day cruise in the Caribbean and we didn't realize it's been two years since we met two years since we probably called um, usually we just chat and not even that often so time flies by so fast we are so amazed that when you have God in the center and when God brings you people as friends it's like hard to get rid of. It's a matter of you as people, how much do you value your friendship, where do you see your friendship going, and faith. Once again, praying for one another, being for one another, 
being there for one another and supporting one another despite your distance. It's the little things that maintain a friendship in long distance. Because we have other people in our lives, especially our families, that cannot be compromised just because of one person or a few people. They are precious, yes, but if we can't uh, care and love for the immediate people around us, then it's going to be out balance. We're not going to be equally loving and caring for the people that we should be because we're focusing on someone else. So long distance is not a good basis to break. It's just that it's a testing factor, as mentioned before, on whether you're ready or you're really willing and committed to have a long distance friendship, a friendship that will be tested like physically in distance, as well as, you know, yourself. How to preserve a friendship. Okay, this might take some time for me to think, but first, time. It could just be like talking over the dinner table for families and sharing, like it's quality time. Sometimes people take a lot of time but there's no quality and meat in it. Second, I think you have to know what to treasure. I'm going to try following all teams here, so time and treasure. Treasure as in what part of that person do you love the most and which parts do you think you need to work on together or as a group? Because there will be differences, there will be similarities. And so you have to learn to treasure within your friendship which goals, which memories, which things about each other that you need to continue to love and grow with because Oftentimes friendships can break or relationships can break because we no longer treasure the good things instead we focus on the bad things. I think there's a quote or something like you focus so much on the one bad thing that you forget all the 99 that were all good. When you look for the gems, the jewels in other people, it'll also shine back to you. So when it comes to friendship that's like always. If it's a group of friends, same thing. If it's between two of you, it's the same thing. You treasure one another. Um, another thing that I've realized, like, I've always known this, but it's become more evident now. You should always be thankful. Like, never underestimate how powerful the thing you could be. Like, we would say thank you to one another for, like, being there within the day. Like, oh, thank you. Like, why are you saying thank you? Oh, you know, like, for listening, for just having someone to talk to it, those are little things that can mean a lot. And when you're thankful and you show that person how grateful you are for them, that like personally, it makes things a lot lighter. So in, in when it comes to friendships, like I always make sure that if I don't say thank you, I at least tell my girls, especially those in my small group or life group, that hey, someone loves you, someone cares for you, I love you, I care for you guys, I pray for you. It's like showing them that you're really grateful for them being in your life. Trust. So when it comes to friendship, you do not just trust someone, you also have to be trustworthy. So I'm going to be inserting a few more Bible verses, as usual, about friends. Because God, like there's a song called I Am A Friend Of God, and that's like the best friendship you could ever have. And God is already the best example of how to be the best kind of friend. And we're not going to reach that level because we're not him. We're not perfect. Not even close. But we could always try. We could always try to be trustworthy, to be faithful, to be loyal. That even when a lot of people are trying to pressure us into spilling secrets, into saying things about an issue regarding our friends, that we would stay trustworthy, that we would remain with the integrity, not just of ourselves, but of our friends. And so that's the wrap. I'll be putting up the verses and see you in the next video. God bless.